Uh, we've spent the last several videos examining the gamma function and just some of its really basic properties. And this was our definition here. And we took some time to prove that the gamma function of one half is equal to the square root of pi. And then we've been using the gamma function to solve uh, different kinds of integrals. We worked through several examples. Uh, they were pretty straightforward, actually. And in this video, and uh, in the one that follows this one, we'll try to work through some examples that might be a, a little bit more complicated. We're looking here at this integral. We have x to the m e to the minus a x to the n power dx. We want to see, can we solve this integral? And it sort of looks like a typical gamma function, but we've got some problems here. The main one being is that here it's e to the minus x. So the variable that it's raised to is just to the first power. And here, this is raised to a variable that's multiplied by a constant. And what's more, the variable is raised to a polar here. So our hope is if we use kind of a UDU substitution on this inter on this integral here, so this becomes e raised to some variable to the first power, will the rest of the integral fall in line and resemble a bona fide gamma integral that hopefully will give us a solution. So we start off and we say, well, let's let y equal a times x to the n. Then dy, that will equal a times n times x to the n minus 1 dx. Now when we make this variable change right here, this will become e to the minus y. So now we want to express the rest of the integral in terms of y and dy. So we've got to get the dx here expressed in terms of dy. So we divide both sides of the equation and we'll have dx dividing both sides of the equation by this that will be 1 over a n times x to the 1 minus n times dy. But this has to be expressed now not in terms of the variable x, but in terms of our new variable y. So we go back and look at our substitution. Um, y over a that equals x to the n power. So if we raise both sides to the 1 over n, that would equal x. But we want to have x to the 1 minus n power. So I have to raise both sides of this equation the 1 minus n power. So here we're going to have y over a to the 1 over n raised to the 1 minus n power and that will equal x raised to the 1 minus n power. So there's our expression for x to the 1 minus n. So we go back here and we say dx will equal 1 over a to the n. Let's write this a little neater. 1 over a times n times this, which is y 
over a to the 1 minus m over n and times dy. Okay, so this is going to express as e to the minus y. dx, we have that. This is now expressed in terms of the variable y and dy. Um, one more that we have to deal with, x to the m. So we go back to here x to the m power will be this raised to the m power. So we're going to have y over a to the m over n. Now we should have all the pieces here. Oh, one more thing to consider. Um, if x is 0, y is going to be 0. If x is infinity, y will be infinity. So with our new integral, the limits are going to be the same. So let's see, we're going to have here integral x to the m, that's this, y over a e to this, that's just e to the minus y, and dx, that's this, we can take this to the outside of the integral, and we'll have this, to the 1 minus n over n, dy. Now everything here is expressed in terms of the variable y and dy, and y goes from 0 to infinity. So we have transformed this integral with our substitutions has now become this integral. And this is something that we can see if we can kind of plow our way through it. Um, we have some more algebra manipulations to do here. We may not have time to do it all in this one video. Um, let's look this video up. Come back, join us in the uh, next video, and we'll try and plow our way through this um, and see if we can get the solution then to what we originally started off here. Come back and join us, and let's see if we can wrap this up.